Yes, I know y'all like that. I know y'all like that. Ain't no stopping us now. I mean, when we start hearing that beat, I'm like, yeah. We are in studio once again. This is your girl, Dr. Lucretia Williams. And I'm so grateful to be back in studio with our wonderful listeners. And, of course, our fabulous co-host, Lala and Dobby. Good morning, ladies. Good Good morning. morning. And good morning, the one and only Bishop Victor Tyrell Perry. Good morning. And he got special effects. Bishop yes, he's on it. He oh, is on he has, it. He has a lot of time to practice. He had a lot of time to practice since we haven't been on it. I <laughs> it feels like forever, but you know what? You are working on purpose and doing what God has called you to do. You just have to continue expanding your work. And so without further ado, we have an, a special guest that we have in studio, which um, Dabby is going to introduce. Good morning, oh, yes. Dabby. Go Good ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Make sure this rest is good. <laughs> Shout out to Heavy Hetty for making sure we had our tea this morning, okay? And so I have the esteemed honor <laughs> to introduce one of my classmates. And I'm about to throw in there, you know, my fit personal physical trainer before he left overseas. But we're going to get into it, okay? <laughs> All right. Now, let's I, do it. I got to warn you. I've known him. Since 1996, 97 in Miami, North, at the Miami Northwestern Senior High, and I've always struggled with this beautiful Nigerian name. Okay, <laughs> so Dr. Onyende Dekachi Ebedeji is the owner and founder of Onyx Fitness Therapy. Now, I call him Dr. OC, okay, but we're going to get into it. He's been a personal trainer for over 21 years, and he began his career at US1 Fitness in Daniel Beach, where he encountered the 9-11 hijackers in early 2001, which later inspired him to join the Army Reserve. He went to serve in Iraq and was a participant of the conflict along with fellow soldiers. He left US-1 Fitness and joined LA Fitness for a new opportunity of employment in early 2002, which allowed him to gain experience as a general manager. In 2008, he ventured to establish his own personal training studio Onyx Fitness Therapy. The term Onyx is twofold. He chose Onyx as the symbol because of his love for stones and his holistic healing qualities. <laughs> At the first three letters of Onyx, it coincides with his name. As a Nigerian American, wearing stones is symbolic that he wears around his neck and wrist to pay homage to his heritage. Mm-hmm. The concept is to promote holism, Onyx, and utilize fitness as therapy. Hence, Honest Fitness Therapy. His passion is a tagline is to gain, sustain, and regain optimal health. One of his independent acts was to help create a form of exercise for patients with Parkinson's disease. Talk about innovative. Mm -hmm. And he teach them the art of boxing. He was the first to be headlined nationally for coming up with his concept with his then partner and was featured on ABC News, CBS News, New York Times, Chicago Tribune, and uh, magazines and newspapers all over the world. This concept was adopted by other entities, and physical therapy groups are still being used today. He's also trained some NFL stars to include, but not limited to, Marvin Jones, Marvin Snoop Menace, Marcus Barnes, just to name a few, and of course, Miami's own, Willis (laughs) McGahee. He's currently training for bodybuilding and practicing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, his educational degrees, he earned two bachelor's degrees in graphic design from Florida Atlantic University 2005 and health science from Purdue University in 2010. And he earned also an associate degree 
in occupational therapy from Kaiser University. But last but certainly not least, he got his doctorate degree <laughs> in occupational therapy from the University of St. Augustine. Recently, he did uh, acquire his degree in occupational therapy where he attends to establish hand therapy and upper extremity rehabilitation. And he will continue his passion while working with the veteran community. Without further delay, let's give him a big good success. Welcome, Dr. O.C. Dr. O.C. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. So now I know I gave you know your bio um, just a snippet of it because you have done so much great work. And, and I started by saying that I know you from Miami Northwest and you were a phenomenal athlete. At the time, we're both in the medical magnet and doing a thing. So what was your experience growing up as a Nigerian American in Miami in the 90s? What was that like for you? Well, starting off, um, coming into Miami, you realize that um, everything is very uh, scattered and sectional. Mm -hmm. So um, we moved from Illinois, Greenville, Illinois, small town, uh, to Miami uh, back in 1987, I believe. Mm. and um, quickly realized or introduced to the Haitian community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And, um, you know, it was just a, a kind of a culture shock because yeah. um, at the time in that small town in Greenville, Illinois, uh, there weren't many people that looked like me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, predominantly white, if not only all white, we pretty much um, were the only blacks in that small town. Mm. And um, when we moved down to South Florida, it was, uh, you know, like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was a little different for sure. You know, so that I remember. OK, yeah. so definitely culture shock. And so being that so your family, are you first generation Nigerian American? I am. Yeah. Um, before uh, really me, I'm the first person in my family to be born here in the United States. Okay. Wow. Yeah, and uh, my older brother um, Chuks, his whole name is Chukunyeri Chirimika, which is like another thing. <laughs> so uh, Chuks, he was born in Nigeria. So um, my mother had me. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, we were living in. Well, my mother was living in, and my parents were living in um, Greenville, Illinois at the time, and they had. Uh, have me at uh, St. Louis because that was where the major hospital was. So I was only born there when we weren't like living there. So, but yes, I am first generation of um, of a great family. Well, let me ask you, Dr. O. C. because yeah. um, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Your bio is so extensive and expansive, which yeah. which is you know which is which is great. I'm an Aries, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to ask you why. What inspired you to go into the Army Reserve? Was it was like college so, not an option for you, or that was where your heart's desire went? It, it was so. Um, you know, for. Us, you know, I have uh, three other brothers. Mm -hmm. um, education was like first. Like mm -hmm. if we didn't come home with bees, then it was. A, That's a Nigerian. That, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, college was always first. We had our options, um, you know, so that was always there. Uh, for me, it was more. So um, I guess a little bit of patriotism because okay. at the time um, it was like the 9-11 mm -hmm. time and a lot of my friends were um, going off, you know, to go fight. And, you know, me, you know, having that encounter with uh, one of the, the hijackers, one of the pilots, mm. um, you know, I'm like, man, you know, these are my friends. Uh, my best friend, Antoine Smith, um, may he rest in peace, he actually was killed in 2004 uh, in Iraq, you know. So um, and then, uh, you know, some of my other friends that I've known, you know, they were, you know, kills of all, you know. So it was like, man, you know, I kind of like a, a guilt mm -hmm. thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was like, OK, well, I mean. You know, this is my generation, you know, so I don't want to have to like grow old and regret, you know, not going, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, all of my other friends are fighting on my behalf. So I said, you know what, um, you know, I mean, I have some great things going on here, but, you know, I mean, I, I got to go, mm -hmm. you know, so that was uh, one of the reasons why I, I decided to, to jump in. That was a good question. Now, you just kind of glossed over <laughs> you having this experience with mm -hmm. the hijacker. Tell us a little bit about that experience. What was your experience? So, um... After I left Publix, because I was, you know, just working at Publix um, after high school, mm -hmm. um, I left and, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of, you know, try something, you know, that I was kind of interested in because I didn't really know what I wanted to do after high school. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I decided to become a personal trainer. I loved working out and, you know, I saw that, uh, you know, people actually do this for a living. Mm -hmm. So um, I went to uh, US One Fitness um, you know, I applied there. Um, I couldn't get a job there as a personal trainer because I wasn't certified. And I didn't even know that you had to get certified to work as a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, this was early 2001. Mm -hmm. um, then these guys come in. Um, you know, they check in. Um, they ask me questions. Like one guy, the, the guy with the glasses, his name is Zayed Jura. Uh He was asking me some weird questions. He was uh, not weird in a sense, but, you know, just very specific, which... At the back of my mind, I kind of thought it was odd, mm -hmm. but um, I just kind of ran with it because, you know, hey, we're all here to work out, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know like what they were kind of getting at. But, you know, he was asking me, hey, you know, I mean, I'm looking to, you know, fight, you know, learn how to box um, martial arts, whatever. Um, I had a little bit of experience um, working with Coach Roach, you know, Coach mm -hmm. Roach, you know, the wrestling team. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, at that time I was kind of like, uh, you know, interested in getting into boxing and things like that, but I didn't have like a whole bunch of experience, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I didn't know what to tell him. I was like, you know, I mean, I, I'm trying to learn myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So he ended up, um, you know, going to, uh, work with uh, the manager there who was a, um, uh, martial artist, his name, Bert, Bert Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he pretty much taught him from there, but, you know, I did show him, you know, some weights and stuff that I, you know, knew or whatever the case is. Um, and then after that, it was, uh, 9 11 happened. Um, you know, FBI called people in, you know, there were people who were, you know, talking to him, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I find out that, you know, that was the guy I know him, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, so he was one of the hijackers. Wow. He was the hijacker for flight 92, I think, or 93, it was the one that crashed into Philadelphia, the, mm -hmm. um, oh the field goodness. it was supposed oh, to. He was wow. the pilot, the guy that was flying. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and, uh, I got freaked out, so, um, I quit. As you should have. I yeah. Mean. So mm -hmm. I ended up um, leaving that gym. And I went to LA Fitness um, in early 2002. And that's where I met my current business partner, Sheldon. So I've been working with him since 2002. It's been 21 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. That left an impact on yeah. you. You remember yeah. the flight number mm -hmm. and I remember, that whole yeah. experience. So what have you done to deal with that particular situation? Um, so at the time, you know, I was still a teenager you know i was having some nightmares and stuff mm -hmm. like that and um you know just not really honestly i didn't really talk to anybody about it you know i didn't really tell anybody that i was you know afraid you know at the time you know mm -hmm. so there was just a lot of emotions going on you know there was anger there was some fear there was just a, a lot of stuff going on you know mm -hmm. and um you know i at, in the back of my mind i was like man i wish i'd known you know mm -hmm. but i i didn't so um, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, working with it, you know, just kind of, you know, looking at, uh, well, at the time it was just glued to the news, just kind of watching what was going on. Um, and that was like a coping mechanism itself, you know, so that, um, you know, going to church, you know, our church was huge, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, when at, we were going to Northwest Baptist Church right down uh, the street from here and it was, uh, you know, pretty much, um, you know, guys were signing up again, my age group, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, just talking to them you know, uh, rooting them on, hey, like, hey, man, do your thing, you know, and, you know, just kind of going from there. But it was tough. It was uh, tough, um, you know, having to, like, deal with that at the very beginning. But then time, as time went by, it was like, okay, well, you know, um, I know that I'm good, you know, um, I'm just going to continue to work and do my thing and then just kind of watch my friends do their thing, you know, from a distance, you know, knowing that I wanted to get in, you know. So at the time, I was like, man, what do I want to do? What are my career choices? Should I Join the fire. Most of my career choices at that point after 9-11 were, um, you know, having to do with 9-11. So I wanted to become a firefighter. Or should I become a cop? You know, it's just a lot of different mm -hmm. things that I wanted to do, you know. And I ended up doing like something completely different, which was graphic <laughs> design. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just like I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just jumped onto one thing and wished I did everything else. I truly believe that no experience mm -hmm. is wasted. And your experience, you started to mention about your business partner. So not until that situation happened or that thing happened to you, mm -hmm. then you said you were introduced to your business partner. Yeah. So how has that changed from becoming a graphic designer to now doing what you do today? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's funny because, you know, as I was... Um, 
you know, in graphic design school, I was also uh, working at LA Fitness as a personal trainer. So I was just like doing com two completely different things. Mm -hmm. um, but I always maintained, you know, that relationship, you know, with uh, Sheldon. He was, um, you know, kind of like I was learning a lot from him, you know, because I didn't know anything about like training people mm -hmm. outside of like what I read in the books. But, you know, he taught me because he was a bodybuilder. He worked with a bunch of people and, um, you know, I, I just kind of learned from him from there. So I got into bodybuilding with that. And, um, but I always, you know, maintained that graphic design because I'm an art person too, you know, so uh, I was able to, you know, stick with that and, um, you know, stick with the fitness as well, you know, so kind of seeing the best of both worlds in which, um, you know, I kind of uh, became really good at graphic design. I think I, uh, just started designing websites, flyers, business cards, and things like that, which I'm using today for, for your um, business. business. So, yeah, yeah so nice. instead of like hiring a graphic designer, I can just kind of do my own mm -hmm. graphic designs. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Let mm -hmm. me ask you this question, Dr. OC. What is the most mis misconception about personal fitness? Um, so, there are a lot of like misconceptions, a lot of um, conceptions, um, a lot of confusion as far as, you know, what, you know, what we do and what we can't do, um, lines that we need, can cross and what we can't cross. And, trends that are coming apart too um about um so one of the biggest misconceptions uh for us is um you know as far as the the, the group of people that you know we work with you know so we're not health well fitness personal trainers aren't healthcare professionals you know so um you know there are certain things that you know uh, i guess we should not be able to do you know so like if we're working with um, you know, a patient who, or a person who has, um, you know, this uh, amount of disease or, you know, whatever the case is, then, you know, we should be able to outsource and refer them to, you know, the people that can, mm -hmm. it can work with us, you know, so, um, you know, you have that aspect. Um, you also have, uh, you know, the sports medicine aspect of it as well, okay. you know, so, um, you know, what we, what personal trainers can do is, you know, we can work with, um, you know, certain athletes. And this is just beyond the scope of um, working with um, the general public who, you know, come in to try to lose weight and things like that, you know, but we can work with professional athletes, you know, we, we can work with, um, you know, sports teams and things like that. But there has to be like a certain um, credentialing um, base with it. So a, a sports team like, say, um, FIU or FAU, um, you know, wouldn't take a general personal trainer unless they have uh, this level of a certification. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, just kind of going from there. So like, uh, you have the strength, uh, and conditioning, um, coaches, mm -hmm. um, you have, um, you know, the nutritionist, which is another thing too. We can't, uh, um, you know, give out diets, you know, that's just scope. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, they out here doing, I ain't mean to cut you, but you know, some of these physical therapists, yeah. I'm not sorry, physical trainers, cause you're in a different space. Some of these physical trainers be like, you know, you see them on IG, and they like you get a meal plan, and they yeah, they not, so they are here so they're unless wrong. they're certified though, right? So, right. But so not everybody's certified. So here's the thing with that is like it all falls in the scope of practice. So um, you have the dietitians, right? So the dietitians are um, technically the only ones that are able to like diagnose um, nutrition meals for uh, special populations. Okay. Um, because technically, uh, you know, we can get sued for it. You know, if mm -hmm. we give out like specific food plans for uh, different people you know if we're not like a registered dietitian we can recommend so there's a difference between recommending mm -hmm. um and um actually giving out hey this is what you're you know supposed to be it's kind of like a, a weird fine line you mm -hmm. know because i you know i've been doing it for years you know i know you know what to eat and depending on like the different populations too because mm -hmm. you know I, I work with a lot of diabetic patients you know my mother she's diabetic which is another reason why i got into mm -hmm. ot you know is um to help her you know and what she's eating but you know there's so much more to it because um you know let's say for instance if your phosphorus drops you know there are certain foods that you have to avoid mm -hmm. you know so if i um as a personal trainer um, tell, you know, this person with the dropping, uh, phosphorus level, okay, you're going to eat this, 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 and then, um, you know, their, their phosphorus level or rather, um, increases, uh, to the point where, you know, it begins to damage their kidneys even more than, um, you know, the lawyer, if they, you know, decide to go that route say, Hey, you know, this personal trainer, um, advise. told, yeah, advise mm -hmm. me to do this. Well, you know, are they, um, License. right. <laughs> you know, so that, that's, you know, one of the, the things that, or, or misconception, if you will, um, as far as, you know, what trainers, you know, can do, you know, so um, not a lot of people like dab into that. 
but you know it exists you know so yeah we have to be very very careful with the uh you know type of instruction or um diagnosis that we give people you know because you know florida you know florida is you know it's all about <laughs> yeah it's all about like what you have and you know um what you can do to back yourself up so that way you're not like legally um liable for things that was good and i experienced that when i said at the beginning when i introduced him you know years ago before he left and even to continue your academic studies one thing that i loved about training with oc and i actually experienced his technique of occupational therapy so y'all know remember my lungs start getting janky on me and i was afraid to work out and he was like daddy i need you to get into the studio i need you to get in, <laughs> get in the gym i need you to get in i'm like okay so when i got there um, I was already traumatized from CrossFit, okay, at, at 24 Fitness, I almost died. Oh. So he was like, Davi, I got you when I tell you. Even like he would check my pose, okay. my breathing, like it felt very clinical, but very, you know, we said somebody mm -hmm. has a good bedside manner, your mm -hmm. doctor. Mm -hmm. He was amazing. Like I had a good workout, y'all. Okay, I'm my legs and everything. No, he so... he looks like he doesn't play. <laughs> he's a gentle giant. Yeah, no, that's what I said. He didn't deny he's it either. Patient, it's like he's, he's like... patient. He's gonna be like, okay, he be like this. Okay, Dab, you're gonna breathe through it. Mm -hmm. Now let's get back to it. So you know, he let me pace myself, mm -hmm. and that's something that when I've experienced with other physical trainers, yeah, they they didn't know. It wasn't no pace. Were, they yeah. weren't worried about my heart rate, you know, making mm -hmm. sure. I mean, he's like, cal you know, calculating things. And for me, it just set the tone. And I was able to, I see, I kept the weight off. Mm -hmm. We about to go in and go ham again once my schedule, we get our schedules aligned. But I wanted to say that, that he's passionate about mm -hmm. what he does and he's gifted for the work that he does. So let's go into you and Parkinson's disease. Yeah. You, you know, you are very intentional about the clients that you serve. And, you know, you talked about diabetes because of your mom. But why Parkinson's disease as another area of concern that you do when it comes to your therapy and care? So um, in hindsight, um, after all it was all said and done, uh, Parkinson's is like the ideal uh, population for me to work with uh, because it is so biomechanical. Mm. Um, you know, if you guys are familiar with Parkinson's uh, disease, you know, in the basal ganglia, basically the, the part of the brain um, in which uh, those uh, brain cells uh, die and, you know, it kind of controls your movement that are responsible mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. you know, your, your movement, your gait, your function, the way you walk and move and things like that. Um, you know, that's all biomechanical. That's, you know, what, you know, I've been doing, you know, so... You look at, um, you know, a Parkinson's a patients or Parkinsonians, because there are different levels of Parkinson's and types of Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. um, you look at um, the things that are affected. So you look at their gross motor uh, skills, a lot of festination, meaning that their uh, gait is shuffling as they're walking. You mm -hmm. may notice that they um, tend to shuffle a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, uh, doing things that are functional around the house, you know, grabbing things or, or whatnot, you know, they're, they're struggling with it, but you know, again, there are different levels of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, I actually was introduced uh, to it, you know, because when we became independent, you know, I was working with, uh, not with Sheldon, but with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, his father just passed away from, um, a Parkinson's disease. Oh, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, they had a lot of friends. They had like a support group. They started a support group that they got involved with. So a lot of them started coming to the gym. And this is when I first left LA Fitness. And, okay. and at the time I was like taking up boxing lessons and, you know, I was really into like MMA because MMA was starting to like really catch fire and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I wanted to um, just like, uh, you know, come up with uh, something that, you know, I guess different. So that way they're not just lifting weights or whatever the case is, you know, they have to move and things like that. I was like, well, let's try some boxing, you know? Mm. So we did boxing. Um, a lady by the name of uh, Christy Kruger, I can't remember how she we, she came in. She worked for Channel 10. I don't even mm -hmm. know if she's there Her anymore. Her name's not Yeah. yeah. She was on the news. Mm -hmm. she's so she came in um, and she did the interview first. And then I guess the way the media works is, you know, once one story catches, then it mm -hmm. starts to run. Yeah, so they the next, next thing we had Jim Barry come in and we were on the Jim Barry show, yeah. which is on the website. And then um what was it? Uh then the Miami Herald comes in and we were like front page and then we were starting to get calls from out of town and then uh the Oprah Winfrey show called me. I'm like, oh, wait wow. a minute. Yeah. Yeah, wow. but we, we didn't make that show because uh I forgot what happened, but we just we didn't make it out there. Um uh I guess they tried to do a different segment, whatever the case is, I forgot. Mm -hmm. 
um, and then MTV True Life called, and then it was just like crazy, you know. And then I wow. we made the national news on ABC News. This was uh, it's all on my website. If you go on my website, you'll okay. see like a lot of the the uh, videos and stuff, you know. So um, that was cool, you know. So we we got out, and that was kind of like uh, something that you know we established and. Nobody else was doing it, so that's why, you know, all the media was, like, you know, mm -hmm. hitting us up and everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, this, you know, where I was like, okay, well, you know, this is something that, you know, I want to kind of do the rest of, you know, my life, you know. And, wow. uh, you know, so, um, and that around that time is when I uh, went back to school for uh, exercise um, uh, science, you know, and then just kind of went from there, you know, so. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was pretty cool, and you know, I love working them, and I still intend to work with those uh, that that group, you know. So it's, um, and then not just the Parkinson's. It's like I said, it's MS. It's anything that's neurological that affects movement, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So um, you can like incorporate boxing into pretty much everything um, or anything that incorporates uh, you know, movement, you know. So and that uh, from a occupational therapy standpoint you can um, translate that into some of the things that, you know, they do at home because occupational therapy is about occupation. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, making the bed, you know, uh, doing their dishes or putting something on a high cabinet, you know, so all of those things require gross motor movements. And that was the purpose of, you know, the boxing. Wow. Good stuff. Oh. Listen, I took a boxing class and that thing took me all the way out. Baby, <laughs> baby. It took me all the way out, but I under, I, I would try it again because of the discipline mm -hmm. um, and the, the the physical um, results. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> and endurance, that kind of and endurance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop thinking the tone mm -hmm. of your body. Yeah, all of the things. You know, Denny oh was big on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, mm -hmm. it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. Yeah, going twelve rounds is not easy. No, it's, it's not. not. Going one round is not easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> But tell us, so um, this year you will complete, or you already completed your doctorate in occupational therapy. I still have to take the board. Okay. Yeah, so I'm planning to take the board in maybe after the summer or at, towards the end of the summer. Okay. That's, uh, first chance I get, you know, okay. so yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I see that in May, starting today, mm -hmm. you will be featured, while well, you're competing to be featured with the uh, Muscle and Fitness Magazine. Yes. Mm. And win $20,000. Amen. Listen. Yeah. Yes. What, what, what do you need? Okay. Let me know. So, what we so, going to do? So we, many people are listening. So uh -huh. tell us how we can be a part of voting and how this will transform your life and your business so, by winning this. Definitely. And I um, thank them for the opportunity. You know, I've been reading that magazine since I was a kid. You know, mm. it's the... Uh, where I mm. first saw like Arnold Schwarzenegger and yes. all those big bodybuilders are on it, and you know, just uh, you know, being mentioned in that in that space, you know, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to win or not, but in, you know, regardless, I'm just thankful and thank God for the opportunity. Um, you know, just uh, you know, if you guys go to the website, my website, which is onyxfitnesstherapy.com, um, you know, on the first page, you'll be able to uh, see the link and vote. Um, I believe voting started at 10 o'clock, so it should be up and running now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, just go out and vote and you'll just see what happens, you know. So, I mean, even if I don't win, you know, just being on it, you know, competing, getting the opportunity is just amazing. So you'll have a feature and everything on there? Yes. Oh, uh, cool. Full, full In the page. magazine? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and um, this month is, well, last month, April, was a trip because, you know, it was, you know, my birthday month and, you know, my oh, birthday. Right, happy belated, happy belated happy belated <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it usually falls around the Easter time. And um, I don't know if I mentioned that on there, but I was actually on the um, L.A. Weekly magazine. Um, mm -hmm. So they ranked me top 10. Uh, they ranked me number six. Of a uh, top ten top trainers. Yeah. Oh, that's the, awesome. Yeah, if He's you. Really humble, yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm gonna need you to add it to your bio. Yes. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and I have, and then the uh, it was the New York Times. I believe they wrote a full page article. Oh, that's yes. amazing. So, yeah. So if you go on my website, you'll see there that too. You know. So it was. Let's based... take that website again. We all need to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, onyxfitnesstherapy.com mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, basically what we were talking about was the, the concept of um, combining occupational therapy and fitness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, so basically what I'm doing now, you know, because I've been a personal trainer for, you know, such a long time. Um, you know, I, and I love it, you know, because I can incorporate fitness. And I feel, um, as I mentioned, that fitness is uh, the key to health. One of mm -hmm. the keys, a major key mm -hmm. to health, you know, for 
patients with diabetes, uh, patients with Parkinson's, heart disease, it all, um, the common denominator is fitness. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we uh, get people um, to working out, um, that will help uh, decrease their blood pressure, uh, decrease their blood sugar. Um, it will help uh, uh, Parkinson's patients move a little bit better. Uh, patients with MS who are very spastic, which means they're very stiff, um, you know, that would help, uh, you know, uh, their muscles become a little bit more flaccid. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, it, it, the fitness aspect, it can't be underscored. It's like um, mm -hmm. everything is just there, you know, so um, the uh, coupled with the nutrition, too, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get uh, patients off of medication. We're trying to get them to just living healthier, you know. So mm -hmm. if we can get people to, um, you know, subscribe to fitness more, um, you know, that would solve a lot of the uh, the systemic problems that, you know, America has as far as diabetes and heart disease and things like that. Wow. Yeah, that's good stuff. But I know before we go, we, we always take like a quick break before we go and pay some bills. I want to say that I'm looking forward to getting on the other half because we're talking about mental health this month and we want to continue to bring awareness and for us to, to kind of dive in more about your upcoming event and talking about your passion for veterans and, and unpacking PTSD and what that looks like. We want to really get into that. And so you're just such a well diverse um, clinician, you know, uh, therapist, occupational therapist, physical trainer. And so it's one thing to talk about the physical body, but when we start talking about the strength of the mind yep. and how that all comes together in that holistic way that you provide care for your um, patients. So we're going to get into it, y'all. So after we take a quick break, on the second half, we got more good success. Coming on with Dr. O.C. and the Takeover Crew. Ooh, ooh. Oh. How did I do? You did good. Yeah. 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 We got so much good feedback. Um, oh, yeah? <laughs> yes, we was like, they really appreciate the conversation and glad they tuned in. Oh, nice. Yeah, so Big Party even jumped on. What? Um, as well. You yeah. ever see Big Party? You oh, say wow. a what for the guy who's been on camera? <laughs> yeah. Oprah, 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 Magazine. No, that was uh, very humble, y'all. Yeah. Muscle yeah. and Fitness yeah. Magazine, but at least you're going to get a, a feature in there, so yeah. that's good. Too. If yeah, that's probably, if you if you get that feature. Yeah, but you know, just like I said, I'm just enjoying it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I I don't know how or if I'm going to win or not, mm -hmm. but you know, it was. You keep uh, saying that. Right. So what, what would be the odds? What would be, like, so these are people all over who It's are... the 25 people throughout America. Basically. 25? Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, so. Um, well, uh, our listeners are definitely going to vote for you. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know. The, that might be the only yeah. person on the radio. No, no, no. But that's no, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Even to be honored, that means that you're... That they're looking at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So they selected you guys. To they select. Be... Yeah. So see, that's mm -hmm. big, right? Yeah. So uh, the L.A. Weekly one was kind of uh, crazy because um, these, uh, it's the uh, editors. They were from England, and they had, um, you know, come. They wanted to do like a piece for the L.A. Weekly. It was the L.A. Weekly, okay. and they were like, okay, well, um, Miami's like a hot spot for fitness. So mm -hmm. you know, we were they were looking for like the best fitness trainers in America mm -hmm. so they when they googled me they saw like or googled uh best trainers in south florida they my name was kind of popping oh, up nice. so they you know put me in and um you know they were kind of and that's they have like a top 10 list if you go on the um uh the website you know there's like they have like 10 of the top trainers people from california mm -hmm. uh, i think it was michigan was another one um but i'm number six Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, so cool. yeah. and I know your parents are so happy and glad because um, I watch this is like reality mm -hmm. TV and what's her name? Um, she is a commentator also for CNN, um, and she's Nigerian. And her mm, mom, oh gosh, what's her name? She is yeah. She's a commentary for CNN and she's on a reality TV show. Oh, my life. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh good. Mm -hmm. And her parents were like, "No, just go to school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and go get your master's." Mm -hmm. And so I know education is a big thing. I mean, education mm -hmm. is a big yeah. thing for all of our. But it's more so like stressed with the Nigerian culture because oh, yeah. they want you to be a doctor. A doctor. Oh, my God. And that's yeah. The, yeah. I don't. I don't mm -hmm. know if they're listening, but Dr. my. Wendy. That's yeah. her name, Doctor yeah. Wendy. I know, yeah, Dr. Yes. Wendy, yeah. yeah. My, my, they were, they were flipping out when um, I chose like graphic design because they were like, it was, those are either a lawyer, a doctor, doctor. Mm -hmm. or she stressed teacher. That too. Yeah. That's what Yvonne, um, what's her name? Um, 
Yvonne Orgy in her special, yes. the comedian. That's where I learned it from. Oh, okay. Because uh, okay. her parents like like either a lawyer, or doctor, like yeah. they want you to be like that. And then when she was like, she's gonna be a comedian. They were like, a what? I forgot mm-hmm. what the word that she actually used that they um they called it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yes, yeah, so I learned it from from her. Man, yeah, there's just a lot. I mean, Nigerian culture is. I love it. You know, just um, I, I my parents are like old school Nigerian mm-hmm. too. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like. Uh, gotta get married. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeremy, or if not, you, ain't, you ain't married, you ain't got no baby. Yeah, yet. I know. But uh, my brother, he got married to a Bahamian. Uh, okay. She just got married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of took the weight off of you a little bit. Yeah. Listen, he, was a, he, he did it right. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 That's so funny. So, yeah. But yeah, he's We're doing. Back. Oh. Time goes quickly. Yeah, it does. All right, and we are back with the second half of our show. I hope you guys are listening. Listen, if you want to join in on the conversation, you can call us toll free at 1 88 599 And I'll say that again toll free at 1 888 599 nine six two six to join in on the conversation now i know we're go- we're shifting gears a little bit but i know where we're going to focus but as i looked up and i was like what is may what is what are we celebrating in may may every day is a day of celebration they have bird day okay birds <laughs> Na- the birds national wine day asparagus asparagus day Nash- national macaroon day I'm like, oh, Walnut Day. But the day we're going to focus on today, (laughs) Uh not Mother's Day, you know, we're going to celebrate that as well. Uh But we're going to focus on Mental Health Awareness Month. All right. Right? And so we're going to finish our conversation with Dr. O.C. And um, you're welcome to join us in the conversation. So. I was going to talk just a little bit, some some, some facts about mental health, you know, considering that we are... Talking about mental, health, mental, I can't talk today. Mental <laughs> health awareness month. You kind of set us up and, you know, as a, you know, yes. set, it, set it up for the second half. Um, let's kind of get into May's mental health awareness month. Mm-hmm. While mental health is important to address year round, it is. Mental health awareness month provides a dedicated time for people, organizations, and communities to join their ver- voices to broadcast the message that mental health matters. And Dr. O.C., has been doing that through the space of veterans, PTSD, and he does have an event coming up next month where he's going to really take his voice on a greater and grander scale Mm -hmm. for veterans. So let's get into your work of, you know, why highlight veterans' mental health through the space of PTSD? So um, there's a lot to uncover here. Um, First, just kind of like, I guess, kind of working backwards a little bit. the field of occupational therapy actually started with um, veteran um, mental health. Okay. So back in 1917, mm. um, what happened was the soldiers who were just coming back from World War I um, were having difficulties uh, with um, what was, you know, diagnosed back then, but, you know, what mm-hmm. they called shell shock, you know, which is PTSD now. Yeah. Right. So um, PTSD wasn't like uh, officially a diagnosis until like uh, during or after the Vietnam War. But at the time, you know, nothing had uh, been seen like this because we hadn't had a war like this. So um, what they noticed was after the war, um, much of the male population were having difficulties, uh, you know, getting back to life, um, their roles, you know, as far as, uh, you know, fathers, as far as, you know, working. Um, you know, they were all having uh, difficulties, not just mental, but, you know, physical as well, which also, you know, attributes to like the mental. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, fast forward, um, you know, to today uh, for me, you know, being a veteran, um, you know, I did struggle with uh, some PTSD too, you know, I think we all did, you know, when we got back. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I understand, you know, what you know, my guys are going through, you know, mm-hmm. when, you know, they are having like certain issues. I was able to cope with it a little better. How did you cope with it? That was a good question. Yeah. Well, again, just going back to church, you know, we um, grew up like strong Anglican, um, you know, Christian family. So, I mean, you know, 
prayer warriors, you know, that always helped, you know, starting off, you know, I had a strong, strong support um, system, you know, at home with, you know, family. So they were always, um, you know, there for me. That doesn't mean that I, you know, I didn't have difficulties mm -hmm. coming out, you know, I mean, I still did, you know, so um, I'm a very optimistic person too, you know, so um, one of the reasons why I decided to join the army in the first place was to do things for other people, you know, I wanted Which to... Which was admirable to say, okay. at least because there's some people that are not out there, looking, right. not willing to put their lives on the line for other people. Right, yeah, I mean, that that was kind of like my code, you know, I mean, I, I wanted to be able to um, to do things for other people, you know, I mean... I knew that, you know, I was in danger, you know, mm -hmm. coming in, uh, but, um, you know, I knew that, you know, somebody had to do it, you know, so I wanted to be able to, you know, put a, a foot forward and go from there. So for me, it was like, you know, if I fall into that, that hole, you know, that uh, depressive hole, uh, the suicidal hole, um, the, uh, um, you know, the alcohol, whatever, um, then I won't be able to help the next person, you know, it's kind of, um, I don't know what, what type of thinking you would call that, but, you know, it was like, if I'm not here, then who's going to do this, mm -hmm. you know? So the, I said, you know, I mean, I have something to look forward to, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to push forward and try to help, you know, as many people as I can, you know? So, um, working with veterans has always, you know, been a passion because, um, number one, I appreciate, you know, what my guys, um, you know, did, you know, for, you know, this country, but I also, been there, you know, so, um, you know, I know exactly what they're, they're going through. So anytime I get a chance to, you know, help a, a veteran, uh, nonprofit organization, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it, you know, so I'm really looking forward to this event. So tell us about the event. What is the event? So, um, the event is called a beach war. Um, originally it was called, uh, what was it called? It was called, uh, cap, the uh, muscle tower. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but turns out that Hollywood knocked down the tower. Okay. So we changed it to mm -hmm. capture the flag. So basically it's a beach boot camp and, you know, I've been doing uh, beach boot camps for, you know, some time Saturday mornings, but, you know, we stopped for a while just because I'm um, just got busy, but, you know, we turned it into special events. So okay. basically what it is, it's an obstacle course. And I tried to, um, you know, mimic the, uh, the D-Day, I'm sure you guys are mm -hmm. familiar with the D-Day um, landing. So basically, obstacle courses is on the beach, okay. on the mm -hmm. sand. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we got uh, in touch with the 482nd um, EOD uh, Air Force Family uh, Foundation. So they're the nonprofit organization that are um, helping me with it. Okay. And, um, you know, basically what we're doing is we're doing a us versus them. So they're basically the enemy combatants and they're going to be attacking us with super soakers okay. while the okay. participants okay. are um, trying to complete a series of obstacles on the beach okay. um, in order to capture the flag. So um, the goal is uh, it's going to take place on Hollywood uh, uh, Boardwalk, Hollywood Beach. Um, so we're running about um, a mile down and then we're going to complete a series of obstacle courses on the beach. And then we're going to um, capture the flag. So we're doing it um, in teams. So we're breaking it down into teams. So whichever team captures the flag first wins. Okay. You know? So and then afterwards we're doing a beach barbecue. I um, rented out two pavilions. So you know we'll be doing the the beach barbecue at the end of the uh, of the event. So turkey. The turkey burgers, I think we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Keeping it healthy. Yeah. <laughs> and my friend Vernon Carey. Okay, uh, yeah. Vernon. Yeah, he's going to be out there. Um, he started a restaurant called Green Envy. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a, a, a vegan um, uh, salad bar. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, he's going to be, uh, be he's going to bring smoothies out there and stuff okay. like that. So, um, you know, thankful for his support. And Varan Morenci, um okay. well, he, he's, you know, depending on when, yeah, you remember Varan, he's... Mm -hmm. uh, um, trying to see what his schedule is going to be like out there, you know, so, um, you know, he said he was going to pop by. So we're getting some of our um, old classmates who, you know, were NFL stars. Yeah, we're going to show up and stuff. So mm -hmm. we'll see. And uh, Corinne Olympios might be out there. I don't know if you guys know who she is, but she was um, a star on The Bachelor. Um, she might be out there as well. Again, you know, it depends. As we get closer, we'll know uh, which celebrity or um, athlete is going to be out there. Okay. Now, now my little ADHD was also D Day. Mm -hmm. Now unpack that for folks who don't know. Yeah. What that means? Just, just kind of, just give a little a so, synopsis of it. Yeah. So um, D Day was um, the uh, Americans. Well, really the whole world, because at the time um, Hitler was trying to take over the world or mm -hmm. whatnot, and he had control of France. So um, we had to 
retake France. So mm -hmm. what we did was we um, forced uh, a bunch of uh, of the soldiers, American soldiers, on the beach, and they had to run up the beach about a quarter mile to take hills. And while they were doing that, um, they had to run out in the open. Mm -hmm. um, the Nazis were shooting um, their uh, their weapons and their missiles and pretty much everything, you know. So the the soldiers just had to man it because there was no cover. So they had to go in, and I think we lost like 3,000 people wow. in a, like a couple of hours, you know. So um, it's not going to be that intense. Right, you know? the population of the beach, that's yeah. what I was trying, trying to gauge that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not going to be that intense, but you know, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, mimicking um, some of the obstacles that, you know, they had on the beach. Um, so we're paying homage to those guys too, so... A lot of uh, okay. different things going on there. So give us the yeah. date of the, of the event. Yeah. Yep. So um, we are targeting May 24th. No, I'm sorry. June 24th. You it? Yeah. 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 You yeah so change. we're doing, um, it's going to be Saturday morning. Um, it's going to be nine o'clock. Um, hopefully it's not super hot out there. I don't think it's going to be that hot, but um, it's by the beach. So, you know, everybody will have opportunities to jump in the water. We don't have to run. Like there's not... It's not real boot camp, you know, so. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, you know, we're going to have our walkers. We're going to have plenty of trainers out there, too. So um, they'll stick with the walkers. And, uh, you know, if anybody needs to take a break or whatever the case is, you know, they can just kind of hang out in the shade or, you know, go into the ocean. You know, it's, it's a fun day, you know, so um, and we'll have plenty of uh, refreshments out there, uh, Gatorades and things like that. So, um, yeah, this is going to be June 24th, 9 o'clock. Um, and I know people are, you know, we say nine o'clock, so they show up like 15, 20 minutes late. We're going to be starting nine o'clock on the dot. Like the no, you're, 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 you're yeah. in the arms. I already know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you'll be ready at seven. <laughs> yeah. okay, so no CPT time, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So who would be the prime, you know, um, audience for this? Who should attend this event? Um, Really anybody, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to raise money and awareness for um, uh, veteran suicide. So that was the thing. So, you know, it's great that we're talking about mental health because, um, you know, that's huge. Uh, 22 uh, veteran suicides per day. What? Uh, mm hmm Yep. 22, 22 veteran suicides a day. Wow. You know, that, that's the average. And, um, you know, I think uh, since 9-11, uh, there was like upwards closer to like 40,000 um, suicides. There have been more veterans who committed suicides than actual casualties in, in the war. You know, oh, and wow. we had a lot of casualties in the war. So um, a lot of suicides, um, and I understand too because you know I, I came back with um, you know frustrated as well, mm -hmm. you know I you know and I've known people who you know that I wouldn't even have thought of you know um, but there was a lot of stuff that went on there was I can only imagine yeah there you know um, a lot of dear John I don't know if you guys know what dear mm -hmm. John letters are mm -hmm. you know a lot of yeah. that that stuff going on and um, just exposure, you know, um, a lot of soldiers who were just amputated, a lot of that, you know, mm. so people just didn't want to, you know, go on with that. So, um, and then coming over here with the benefits not being what it should mm. be. It, for oh veterans, yeah. Yeah. Big, yeah. Even me, you know I mean? I, I, I had a heat stroke when I was in Kuwait, you know, I mean, I was, I almost, uh, passed, died, uh, several times out there. Mm -hmm. Um, Missiles in Taji, um, uh, Erbil, which is northern Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, but the scariest moment, believe it or not, for me was that that heat stroke. You know, mm -hmm. because I didn't realize that it was coming about. You know, and I had like you know all my stuff on. Um, I pass out, wake up, and then Doc was like, "Well, you were like 15 minutes away from it because my thing mm -hmm. it was collapsed." You know, wow. yeah. So I mean, just you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like combat related. Mm -hmm. You know, just mm -hmm. things like that. You know, it's mm -hmm. very scary. So. Um, you know, mental health is like huge, you know, when it comes to military and, uh, anytime that we can kind of help, you know, our brothers and sisters, you know, get over that hump and, you know, do fun events like that, let them know, Hey, you know, you're not, you know, alone on this, we're doing something for you, you know? So that was, uh, uh something that, you know, we had in mind and when we, were, we put this uh, thing together. Good stuff. And I was, as, I was, as I was listening and processing, so you stated about your faith. Was your core to help you cope so did you get any professional care when it comes to processing you know your feelings and your emotions post um your tour in iraq yeah yeah i saw a psychologist i think okay. yeah and um some driver's training but um 
Yeah, that the, I don't know if that, the psych helped, you know, because it just felt like you had somebody like outside because you don't like I don't like talking to people like outside. And here I am talking to a big audience. <laughs> right, so, uh, so I think it's different on radio yeah. because the people can't see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. yeah. I'm because we created a safe space mm -hmm. here, too. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people come on the show and things that they won't say otherwise, mm -hmm. they somehow. Yeah. I guess it's Bishop's blessing coming through, <laughs> blessing. you know, that be tag team and yeah. people are able to share those things that people are secretly and silently mm. crying about. Yeah. And so I applaud you for sharing that even as a black male, mm -hmm. a lot of males are hiding yeah. things that they're going through. It, so. It's just, it, you don't want to cross that line. Like, um, I came back, you know, just to kind of, you know, from this perspective, the anger was um, focused, like, on family, you know, because I, um, I'm i close to them, you know, mm -hmm. so a lot of times you would kind of, like, lash out, like, hey, you know, over, like, some of the, the smallest things, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just like, okay, well, you know, you have to take a step back and, you know, look at, you know, what what's happening and, you know, um, look at the whole scope, you mm -hmm. know, and then, you know, hopefully people will understand, but a lot of people don't. Um, there, I, I noticed that there's a lot of appreciation, but there's, uh, it was more like, um, uh, out of sight, out of mind a little mm -hmm. bit, you know? So like, you know, you, you go through the stuff, but you know, you, um, you, a lot of the journey is alone pretty much, you know? So, um, yeah. You mentioned some statistics about, um, mental health and veterans, and we have some, uh, facts actually about mental health. Mm -hmm. More than 50 million Americans struggle with mental illness. And you said, how many veterans? You said 22, 22 per day. Per day, um, mm -hmm. commit, um, suicide of um, veterans. Yep. Also, one in five young people aged 13 through 18 has or will develop a mental illness in their mm -hmm. lifetime. Yeah. Youth depression rates have risen from 12.9% to 25.2%. Two percent from pre-pandemic to yeah. 2021. And I'm gonna read this last um, fact: one and a half of all mental illnesses show early signs before a person turns 14 years old, and three fourths of mental illnesses begin before age 24. Yeah. And one thing I, I think I understand with with being involved in sports and in some form of like a discipline that helps with your self confidence. I think that also helps with your mental illness. Yes. And um, for me, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu did it because it kind of gave that um, that sense of competition, you mm -hmm. know. So when you do succeed in um, whether it's weightlifting, bodybuilding, or, or uh, Jiu Jitsu, um, you know, when you succeed in a tournament or in a, a competition, mm -hmm. um, you know, that gives you that that confidence. Like, hey, you know, I did this, and it gives you something to look forward to, you know. So um, exercise, it, it all falls back to exercise. You know, when you're um, working out, you release endorphins and mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, that uh, helps reduce uh, cortisol, um, the stress hormone, basically. Mm -hmm. So there's a balance that, that comes about with fitness. So fitness is definitely the answer to everything. Good stuff. You know, it's so crazy. Um, about a couple of weeks ago, I attended a party for one of the members of our church. And one of our line, our line, our line dancing instructor was there, mm -hmm. and I forgot how much I enjoyed line dancing. I yeah. was like, mm -hmm. "That's where my joy is, also, right? My happiness is was was there." Mm -hmm. And so I started back line dancing um, mm -hmm. last month, and I was like, "Yes, this is what I enjoyed," and yeah. so I needed that for like this season of my life. I was like. This is the joy I've been looking for, the happiness I've been looking for. I say yes is in line dancing. So I think you find like what works for you. It may not be, you know, the bodybuilding. Like that's not for me. <laughs> but I can watch you bodybuild though. Okay? okay. Definitely. If you need somebody to record, I can be right there yeah. for you. But <laughs> I like dancing. That sounds interesting. It's yeah. interesting. It's fun. I mean, I love to dance. So it just it, it fits like my character. Like what you're doing, I feel like it fits like who you are, your purpose and all of that. Yeah. So you find like in fitness. You find like what's your thing, like what what fits you. So I walk, I, I line dance, I like to dance, I like to twerk too. But we on station that put Jesus Christ first, so you can't really say that. But I like to, I enjoy moving my body, put it like that. Yeah. And so with rhythm to the beat of <laughs> to, to yeah. some rhythm. So I think that's really important, just finding your thing, what works for you, and you have found that thing that works for you. And I think mm -hmm. your event is going to bring because people need an outlet. So it's not like a conference or something that they're sitting down and hearing people talk to them, but they are actually, like Shan saying, you know, movement. Mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. can go on the beach and, the, and water does something to you, that natural 
Yeah. You know, light, water, sun, and the movement. And I'm sure you'll be, are you, will you be doing like a testing for and cholesterol, all that kind of stuff there? We're, we're trying to do that beforehand. Um, we're trying to get, that's why we're, we're advertising it um, way in advance. So we want to um, identify people who um, do have like uh, certain issues. Um, you know, it, going back to like uh, mental health, you know, um, with depression, when you take uh, an antidepressant, um, it's uh, not recommended that you uh, do um, certain activities out in the sun because mm -hmm. it, it will affect, affect you. It, yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so certain things like that, you know, so um, any hypertension, which is huge. Um, we're going to have some nurses out there, you know, so okay. um, I was trying to get the, the city of Hollywood. Um, to come out there, um, there was just the whole thing with the permitting and um, they just said that, you know, it's fine, you know, we can just come out there, um, but uh, I will have my blood pressure cuff out there. Um, we're going to have means of, we're going to have a little bit of medical, um, but again, we're taking every precaution so that way we make sure that nobody uh, is having any issues there. So we have trainers that are going to be watching, um, you know, and then we'll um, kind of uh, eyeball it. We'll see if it, anybody's kind of getting a little lightheaded or whatever the case is, then, you know, we'll, we'll have them, uh, you know, sit in the shade and um, paramedics will um, will arrive, you know, uh, upon call so that we'll make sure that we take every precaution. So that's why we're planning everything out, you know. Good stuff. So you didn't share with our audience how they can register for your event. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, again, if you go to my website. Come on, plug it on the website. Honest yeah. fitness therapy. Yeah. If you go to the website, um, you know, there is a link on there. Um uh, to the Facebook page in which you can register. Okay. So we have a Facebook page, um, which is again Onyx Fitness Therapy, or you can just go to uh, Onyx Fitness Therapy the Facebook directly, and then you can uh, register on there. Okay. Uh, so that way we have a, a list of people. So far we have about twenty six uh, people who signed okay. up, but I know that we're going to have more than that because mm -hmm. you know we still have uh, the Air Force guys coming in. Um, you know we still have like family and friends and some of my clients that are going to show up as well. So. Um, yeah, we're expecting, and a lot of times too, when we do these beach events, people just jump in, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. They're like, "Who are you?" <laughs> like, Want to so, be a part um, of community. Yeah, yeah. so um, you know, we're we're trying to keep it like organized chaos a little bit, so that way we we have our routes planned, so we know who's who, and um, we're not gonna we're not um I'm we're not Jesus, you know, so we can't like feed the multitudes. <laughs> and and stuff. So, we, we have a fixed amount of food that we're bringing in. Um, so, but we'll, we'll do our best. We want to make sure everybody's having a good time. Um, there are, uh, people that are vegetarian, so they can't eat turkey burgers mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why, um, you know, we're, uh, bringing, um, Vernon Carey. We used to play yes, for the Dolphins. Can, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, um, he has, a, again, a restaurant in Miami called Green Envy. So, you know, you guys check it out, you know, if you guys are looking for healthy options. Okay. Yes. So he'll be up there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's doing a great work in the community as well. Mm -hmm. And so we have heard such a great success story about your life. And you have a legacy to leave behind. Thank you. And so with all the accompl accomplishments and the accolades that you've had and what we've read, what has been your greatest success? Or how would you define success? So... Um... I would define success as um, me being able to help save a life, you know, whether it's um, saving a life through the war or saving a life through health care. Um, you know, as long as I can make a difference in somebody's life, that would be that would be, um, you know, where I, I would be happy with that, you know, um, you know, so that's really my main goal. That's the, the concept behind it, mm -hmm. um, you know, is to be able to to serve other people, you know, to put other people before yourself. Um, so in a way, it's kind of biblical, kind of like following, you know, what Christ wanted us to do anyways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's uh, Christ centered, you know, mm -hmm. um, OT is uh, client centered as well. So, you know, we're always putting the client first. Um, and as far as, um, you know, what I would like to see um, as far as a legacy is that, you know, uh, you know, because we're not going to be here forever, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I would like to uh, be able to start something that uh, has continu continuality, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, I just don't want to leave and then that's it, you know, so like <laughs> uh, I'm trying to put something together that people can use. Um, 50, 60 years down the line, mm -hmm. you know, because it's effective, you know, so, you know, if I can do that, um, then, you know, I know that, you know, I can kind of say, hey, you know, I've done my thing and just kind of, 
go from there. And I know you have shared a lot about your website, but do you have any social media handles that our mm-hmm. listeners can follow you? Yep, you everything have... is Onyx Fitness Therapy. <laughs> Come on, yeah, man. so <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's uh, very unique, you know, fitness therapy. I don't think anybody really you know brands on that, but it's uh, Onyx Fitness Therapy uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Uh, I have a YouTube page as okay. well. So um, you guys can look at any of the major um, uh, social media handles and, you, you know, just kind of look up uh, my name or look up the company name and, you know, just go from there. Good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Right, so before we phase out, you know, so as we were on here, we dropped some facts and definitely about, you know, just adding more depth to the conversation on mental health and veterans. So I love the fact that last year President Biden passed an act where it prioritizes Veterans Mental Health Services and Suicide Prevention, the budget invests over $139 million within VA research programs, together with $16.6 billion within the VA medical care program to increase access to quality mental health care and lower the cost of mental health services for veterans with the goal of helping veterans take charge of their treatment and live full and meaningful lives and we talked about how early there's not that much access for veterans and we want to thank that so also we want to put out there for those who may not be veterans that if you are facing a crisis guys it is simple as dialing 988 to reach the national suicide and crisis um, lifeline and if there's mothers who's you know experiencing postpartum depression or you just depressed for women you're expecting to be a mother you can also dial 1833 nine help moms help for moms help for moms mm-hmm. thank you for that help for moms so that's one eight three three nine help number four moms and again nine eight eight just that simplified access you want to say something yes so may is also a solid month my mom texts me saying that hey. but may is haitian heritage month hey. it is a nationally recognized month celebrated in may every year it is a great time to celebrate the vibrant culture, distinct art, delectable cuisine, and to get to know people of Haitian origin. If you're wondering why we are celebrating Haitian culture in May, we are here with the answer. Haitian Heritage Month Month is an expansion of the annual Haitian Flag Day, which falls on May 18th. The Flag Day is, is observed with much pomp and splendor, even by the diaspora. That's how it found its way to the U.S., a country, a country that's home to a large Haitian population. In addition to that, AM 1490 mm-hmm. made it to the second round Ooh. of the Stella Award. Okay. Our radio station was nominated for major market radio station of the wow. year. I did vote the first round, yes. and then I voted the second yes. round, and I went to vote again. It was like, you have exceeded your yeah, vote. Yeah. Yeah. So oh I God. can't vote again, so we need you all to vote for us. You just um, go mm-hmm. to the website, the Stella Awards, and it's the second um, it's the second tab mm-hmm. where it says radio, radio station, station, and you vote there for major market radio station of the year. We appreciate your votes and for you know listening and tuning to tuning with us, listening to us um, this morning on the Good Success segment. Are you good over there, Bishop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you did you miss yeah. us? You did. We got it. The people got to hear you say that you missed us because they won't believe it. Right. They won't know this. Yeah. Right. yeah. We got to hear you say, happen, Did you miss us, Bishop? Yeah. <laughs> I got to hear you say it and know it's real. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. We are excited to be back in the studio. We were on sabbatical for two months, but we are back in the studio with good success. Thank you to our guest, Dr. O.C. Dr. Yes, make sure you uh, visit his website, Honest fitnesstherapy.com yep. for all the good deeds. Listen, I may just come just to watch the um the Air Force men you said may be that. I may just... No, I may, they're they're going to be there for sure. Yeah, that's confirmed. I may just confirmed. be there to just watch, make sure if they need a towel girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. We are eager to serve. Yes, we yeah. are eager to serve. That's what Jesus did. Yes, he so you may not have those two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread but you will take your 12 yes. disciples. Like hey. oh I may gosh. be a water girl. I I always wanted to be a water girl when I was in high school, so uh, I may be a water girl. That'll work. <laughs> Good stuff. But thank you all for oh, listening um, to the Good Success segment, the Takeover Crew. We will yes. see you next week with more Good Success. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
<laughs> the water girl. Oh my gosh. See? Here you go. Bo Bobby Boucher. Now, see. Do you need some water? Oh my God. <laughs> Bobby Boucher. Bobby Boucher. Any stretches? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. Thanks See, for joining you us. You survived. Yeah. Did you ever think about playing football? I did. Yeah. I played football a okay. little bit at the um, uh, Northwestern, then um, oh. FAU. But I got oh, injured. FAU. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for me, I mean, like just uh, looking at you, I'm like, yeah. you, you scream NFL to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's trying to do it. One more. Okay, we go. My, um, awesome. my cousin is really good friends with Willis McGee. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. I saw him. Uh, oh, yeah? <laughs> I was, was going to get to him like you trained him, but you know, yeah, you were yeah. the veteran. You know, so. I saw uh, Willis last at uh, LA Fitness, actually. Mm -hmm. Is he still doing the CrossFit? I don't know. When I, well, when I saw him, it was not the best image, I would say. Who, Willis? Right, yeah. He, I have a, he was in the. Um, he was, um, can I take these? He was married. Yeah, you can take them. Yeah, oh, After we take our picture, you can come back in. Okay, oh. Yeah. Come back in. Thank you, baby. I'm going to end the. Uh, oh, the lady lady. Oh, the lady lady. Can I save this? Yeah, I can show you. Yeah. Okay. So we're exiting live, y'all. <laughs> this is first time going live. We don't know how to work. So we're going to do it yeah. like this. So you'll hit the X. Mm -hmm.